jiu-jitsu. When we think about jiu-jitsu, most of us think about it almost as a, a sport, playful activity. Uh, yeah, a little self-defense, but uh, modern jiu-jitsu is a, it's a huge sport. But we forget that, you know, true jiu-jitsu is a, is a self-defense art, a breaking art. The inside, and I keep turning in, I'm coming through, pulling it, and bam. Now we can just push it again. Over, snap. Uh, both my myself and other instructors here have back both in Japanese Jiu-Jitsu and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, and Japanese Jiu-Jitsu is definitely more that breaking application of, of combat, of, of Jiu-Jitsu. So um, we're with my good buddy Leon today. We're gonna go through a few uh, standing arm locks. And what started uh, inspiring us a little bit is watching uh, Orlando Sanchez, uh, Orlando Sanchez, God rest his soul. Uh, he was going against Sean Strickland uh, during uh, a training for, for UFC and Orlando uh, caught him in a, a very tight and aggressive arm lock uh, during their regular sport role, which then pissed off Sean Strickland. Uh, I'll put that video in right now. Oh, yeah. oh motherfucker! Hey. So as you saw, uh, he, he used uh, his, elbow, his arm to essentially lock that uh, and break uh, Sean's, they break his arm, but very, very close to breaking Sean's arm. So let's set that up. We're gonna start off first with just a 50-50 pummel. And they were, uh, in that video, you saw they were kind of in and out of these positions a lot. And we're gonna be attacking this arm. So right off the bat, to make this a little easier for myself, I'm gonna get my hand on the inside of his neck, and then I start framing away a little bit to straighten that arm. And then what's really important, almost on all these techniques, so we're gonna use a blade of our forearm to start connecting to the inside of that elbow. So we're here on that 50-50 pummel. I'm gonna come up, prank, and then I'm just gonna think about, bam. Now I'm trying to be very nice on Leon, but I'm pushing elbow forward, okay? And then twisting a little at the same time. I can't be ultra violent on this because I will break Leon's elbow. So I'm gonna frame the inside, and bam. Sorry about that, but that's the feeling of it. I can feel Le Leon's elbow pop just a little bit. I don't wanna be too aggressive. But this is not a, it's not a submission. I'm like doing this as a submission. He's like, eh, not really. He kind of stay with me by adding, a little bit of violence to it, boom. That's when actually these, these, these breaks come in play. Okay, so starting from your pummel, and this is, guys, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, if you are a sport jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner, I do not advocate doing this uh, to your partner during roll. You will break your opponent, you, know, you will break your partner, and that's not uh, the point of this, but you're in a self-defense situation, someone's grabbing you, uh, and you're in that 50-50 clinch. These are great options. So one more time, we'll look at this uh, urigatami, just basically straight arm lock, all right? I could, I'll, I'll add another variation in a second. I could maybe catch it with just my underhook, but you see Leon's elbow starts bending a little bit, and we'll get to that variation in a second. But so to make it a little easier, I'm gonna pummel my hand on the inside. Maybe I'm in the, I add some knees in there, some elbows, some headbutts, and then that arm, forearm, is gonna reference that divot of his elbow, and then I'm gonna think about pushing it, turn it a little bit this way, think about pushing it, to this empty space, bam. And it's violent, all right? It's supposed to be break really, really quickly. Another variation of that is I'm gonna do the same type of thing, but I'm not gonna get my arm over here. I'm just not gonna use that same concept, get my blade to connect this elbow, and I start turning it in. And then it turns into um, urigarami, or sometimes they'll commonly uh, call the, the mirror lock. Uh, Frank Mir hit this in a UFC off the ground uh, when he had an overhook and bottom closed guard. And when he had that overhook, he was tapping the elbow. His opponent turned his elbow in and hit a nice hit. And Leon does not want me to trip him right now, but a nice trip here too, would be a lot of fun. So uh, those two again, the first one is Urigatami. Where I'm here, I'm gonna pummel to the inside, frame off a little bit, maybe have some knees, and then that elbow, that form references that elbow, snap, okay? Second one, I'm in my 50-50 clinch, and now I'm gonna do the same side attack. It's like I'm going for the first one, but he bends it because it naturally happens that way. Get a, and then again, violence uh, is that's gonna tear the shoulder up, okay? One more time on both. First one, boom. I could do it again. I could do it right off the 50-50 clinch. I kind of pull away and roll it up and snap. What's me better off, pummel to the inside. You're using that frame to keep the space between uh, his shoulder and your arm and his arm so you have a little more Rookie space, Sigma has his arm as a stick. I'm getting him both ends of the stick. I'm gonna use that forearm. Snap, pump, win. Wow. Or I'm gonna go for my 50-50 inch. Turn it in, 
So as we're going through the, the, these, these breaks and submissions, uh, we should call them breaks, not submissions. Uh, as we're going through them, some of them will be funky. Like those first two, not funky at all. You know, I mean, we just proved that, you know, uh, you know, Volvano Sanchez has used it uh, during a grappling match. Uh, Frank Mir has used the mirror lock multiple, not multiple times, but use it from uh, the ground and standing works very well. Uh, but now so let's add a little funk to this. So same thing, I'm in a 50-50 clinch. And now my arm is in a clear to the inside. So I have my underhook, it's in a clear to the inside. And we're back to that forearm blade referenced in the elbow. So here, and then I'm gonna pull it, other hand out. And then I get a very tight, we call it Udi Tori, we typically kind of do it from standing, or here. But then as uh, you can see it ready, I'm just gonna snap his, his shoulder and elbow again. So it's almost like, almost like a reverse Russian, it feels like. I'm coming through, pulling it, and maybe when I toss his ass too, no. <laughs> you know, I'll stay, can I try? <laughs> All right, one more time. So you're here, and maybe like, maybe like, uh, he's like, he cleared his arm, starts coming to my back. And this could be a good way to trap it and finish off, okay? And again, it was so important, these, these blades, these elbows, always trying to reference this area of his arm to really start getting though, that breaking feeling, okay? No sloppy, but again, here, pulling it, clear that. And right there. Let's reference another common position you'll be in during a grappling uh, street fight or MMA fight where you're in a 50-50 clinch, or a single collar tie. And again, we could be adding strikes in here at any point in time. Uh, but now let's start going. We're gonna use, I'm turning over here. We're gonna use our Russian uh, to start setting up what we call the walking atami. So first I'm gonna shrug and catch, okay? Now, this shrug and catch could just simply be a break, right? I will, as I'm setting up my Russian, I'm gonna kinda ditch getting to the Russian, trap that arm to my chest, and then my shoulder, and again, we're referencing that bottom part of his, his, his tricep into the elbow. My shoulder and upper arm snaps it right there. So, boom, bam, bam, okay. Now if he turns it like he is, I'm gonna do some more funk there but I'm trying to catch that straight. Another version of that is that I come over the top of the arm instead of under the arm. So we went under the arm before. Now I'm gonna come over the top and to traditional, what we call walkie yatami. Bam. Again, so hit my Russian, but instead of coming under, come over, step through, walkie yatami. And now, kind of fun variation, I'm gonna do a sliding variation. I come over and then my hand goes to his neck. I slide very nicely so I don't break the on. I love YouTube comments and a lot of people say, ah, that's bullshit, that's never gonna work. Uh, this stuff does work, you know, but you have to think about it, it's just more of a, a violent response. We're not playing around and setting up, uh, you know, elaborate submissions and entries and all that. Uh, also I'm thinking that my opponent is not truly uh, an expert grappler. Am I probably gonna do some of these on a black belt level grappler? Fuck no, okay? But you got some douchebag on the street, someone's being really aggressive, uh, or you just catch it perfectly, uh, they, they absolutely work. You know, these, these techniques have been around for thousands of years, um, so it's not like they're, uh, unor they're a little unorthodox, but they're not uh, stupid. They are, they're tried and true. You just gotta have to find an application in modern form. Let's take another one from our 50-50 pummel, all right? Now, we're gonna catch this off of pummel, so which means as I'm swimming through, so I'm here, I'm making my pummeling in me for double unders, all right, or we're just working our pummeling, that as I swim through, I'm gonna pull it up to my shoulder, spread myself out a little bit, and then I have a nice quick snap. All right, so through it again. So as you're pummeling, you don't start bringing myself a little bit away from Leon as I get it to my shoulder. I can step away pretty traditionally. And I can bring him down as a very kind of nice training uh, feel for this. But again, everything here, I can't say it enough, is meant to be a break, not necessarily a submission. So that I need violence, I need energy, I need aggression uh, and speed to finish it. So coming through, using a hand to break it up and pop, okay? Now, you could maybe catch it just shallow, bang, but it tends to bend his arm more. Anyway, you could turn that into another type of submission, but I'm not gonna be breaking his arm on that one. 
So we need a little bit of space. So I swim through and frame out a little bit. Maybe add a knee for flavor. Then I have a straight, you can see where his elbow is going down. And again, my forearm is coming right in that divot and down with break. All right, let's add in our little funk off of our, our single collar tie for a technique called our Shionagi. Now I remember learning this technique uh, back in Japanese Jiu Jitsu, Kobukai Jiu Jitsu that I absolutely fucking sucked at this one. Uh, I had a hard time getting rotation on it. And I remember Shion made me drill for like an hour and a half doing Shionagi over and over and over and over again. From that experience, I'm okay at it now, uh, but it's a, it's a pretty cool one. It has a lot of moving parts to it, but let's just look at it and see how it, how it works. So first, I'm gonna use my Russian again, and I'm gonna come over, and I'm gonna use more of this bottom forearm, okay, to tack that elbow, then I'm gonna switch my grip, all right? So I start off my Russian here, and then it's gonna fold, okay? Now I'm gonna step my left foot through the hole, bring the arm over my head, turn in. Now I have this very, very, I'm gonna take you down, but very nicely. I have this really strong grip, and I could take him down and finish it, or Again, I won't do this now. If I add violence of movement, that thing is, that arm is gonna be shrimp. I'm gonna pull him out, and you see how what's gonna happen with Leon's arm. This arm continues going that way. And you'll probably get like a, a shoulder arm separation, but with violence. One more time. So here, Underneath, spin you, spin you, spin you. Okay, this arm is gonna push up, which causes that hand to flip. Step underneath. Now I think I'm dragging it over my head like I'm combing my hair on my own forearm. Back stepping out, violence. In a previous video I put out, we uh, broke down a Kimura from a, a lot of different perspectives. Uh, and this one is to do a quick version of it. And it's more the standing version of the Kimura. Um, or the reverse Udigarami in, in Japanese Jiu Jitsu, or Gyaku Udigarami in Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Uh, but we're gonna be, again, this Kimura will work as a takedown, but we're approaching it right now from a, a breaking perspective. So I have to add a bit of violence to it. So I'm gonna start from a single collar tie. I could come from 50 50 clinch. Um, now I could be aggressive with it. I'm coming over the top, getting my grip, and then I'm gonna step forward and think about just whipping that, that arm, spin you a little bit. I whip over and down and pull my elbow violently down. That's what actually is gonna cause the break, all right? So again, I come over, go and get my grip. And then I think about whipping my elbow over and down violently. Boom, boom. And that is gonna shred his shoulder, which the Kimura is meant to do, okay? So one more time. And we do a 50-50 clinch. I make a bump a little bit, come through it, violence. Or, let's say Leon started getting my back. I catch it, step forward like we would traditionally uh, use for a throw. Now we're just gonna bring it over the top and bring it down. Uh, I love this one and how uh, my instructor, Shion Russ St. Hilaire uh, in Japanese Jiu-Jitsu explains to me is that you can get any dumb idiot to shake your hand. And out of all self-defense techniques I've used that relate to Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, I've used this one a little bit more because uh, most of the time when you're dealing with people, uh, they're drunk and they're a little more uh, stupid and they'll shake your hand and, and you can do some cool things to control them. But this particular one called San Kajo is a great uh, break or control position. So, Leon's drunk as fuck. What's up, buddy? He shakes my hand, okay? Now, I uh, pocket a little bit, almost like cradle of space. I uh, pocket, step through the hole, get it into my chest, okay? Now I'm gonna back step and then there's the control. I could spin Leon all around, want make the cameraman chase, chase me. We, he's not chasing me, it's kind of fun. All right, if I want to bring him out, it's easy to bring him down to the ground, okay? Or come through, and this is just a snap. I'm gonna pin his wrist to my center line, and then fast hip movement with a back step now you can see how Leon and me going slow, Leon adjusts to me, okay? Well, I'm gonna be much quicker turning my hips in than he's me backing out, so my, I'm just gonna go boom, and that's gonna shred his arm. And from a control perspective, I can just feed it to him underneath, 
All right, buddy, calm down. Have a good day. Another little funky one uh, called Tatsumaki off of a, a grip or grab. And say, Leon grabs my shirt, grabs my gi. My hand's gonna come over and I'm gonna clamp my arm on top of his forearm and get my thumb in his hand. And then I'm gonna turn my body back in, catch his elbow, and I'm gonna be really slow here because this really hurts like some of a bitch. Rotate out and pull. Okay. So here, over, snap. All right, so I'm coming over, grab the wrist, turn, use my shoulder, turn it in, and then I pull. I could bring him all the way down. It's very uncomfortable everywhere. I know, I'm beating you up today, but I'm having fun, okay? I'm sorry, one more time. <laughs> so I come over, pull, control that wrist, and snap. Okay guys, thanks for watching uh, our series on standing arm locks, or what you call it, standing breaks. Uh, really coming from Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Uh, so if you like it, please comment, just like, subscribe, hit that alert button, all the things you're supposed to do uh, when you watch our videos. Thank you.